This audio series is the property of the radio advertising people. Use of this audio is restricted and permission must be sought before use. This audio series is rated 80. Contains strong language. Parental guidance is advised. Episode 30, the season finale. There had been many stories and rumors of hideous crimes in the past. We had heard of these stories, but most of the time, we never believed them. I remember when I was growing up, I used to listen to news a lot. The stories were always the same. The same politicians always exchanging power. If it wasn't party A in power, then it was party B. I heard the same names over and over again. Powerful men. I sometimes felt like they were playing with our minds. They controlled everything. Our resources, our wealth, our governance, whilst many people at the bottom of the food chain suffered. They enriched their pockets with the sweat and toil of the masses. For them to be able to do such, they equally had cults and fraternities they belonged. Each had their rituals. Sometimes, you hear in the news of people gone missing, never to be found again. You hear of strange murders and body parts removed for all forms of rituals. Yes, they live among us. I'm a sacrifice. Mommy, my life is a message. A simple message. They who have eyes, let them see. Rocky, Rocky, I found them. I'm so scared right now. What have I gotten myself Mansa, into? Mansa, Mansa, listen. You need to calm down. I need to know what happened. <laughs> they are all part. Oh my God, they are all involved. They all knew about if it. If you don't calm down, I cannot it's help It's bigger you. than I thought. Oh, I can't believe I'm, this listen, is happening right here on campus. Listen, You are on speaker. We can hear you. What exactly did you hear? <laughs> this is crazy, Rocky. This is scary. Did you know that every year for the past 70 years, a girl is raped and impregnated deliberately as a form of sacrifice to appease their gods? 70 years. This means that 70 girls have been raped. But how is that possible? <laughs> Let me explain. Rocky, the land that the university was built on was owned by a cult. They were called Boorman. Boorman. Can you spell this for me? I, I, I think it's B-U-O-R-M-A-N. In English, it means Rockland. I see. That is name of hostel, yes? Exactly. Rockland Hostel. Apparently, that's where the shrine used to be. The hostel was built at the exact same spot where the shrine was, just next to the science block where Mami was raped. Then I'm sure if we dig, we find human bodies. I am very sure, very sure. <laughs> they used to perform rituals here in form of human sacrifices. Women were mostly used. When the owners of the school acquired the land to build the university, I heard there were many land litigation issues. So eventually, the deal was that every year, one girl has to be raped and impregnated as a sacrifice on her birthday. She must give birth and the child will be given to the chief. What else have you found out, Mansa? Every year, a cult leader is selected. The leader must be a third year student, a male to be precise. The person is taken through some blood rituals and fetish and all of that. He must swear an oath of secrecy by cutting his palm and squeezing the blood on the skull. This is not good. At all, Rocky. And it gets worse. They perform all these in the highest secrecy. Have you realized all these rituals the university students have been involved in? Have you ever heard of the universities complaining about them. It even extends to some of the senior secondary schools. Are you saying the university administration is aware of this ritual? Very likely, but it will only be known by a specific group of people. It gets worse, Rocky. Guess who was inducted as the newest leader of the cult? Is it who I am thinking? <laughs> I doubted it at first, so I confirmed it with the skull in his palm. I saw it, Rocky. I saw it with my own two eyes. Tell me, who was it? <sighs> it was Max. Oh, no. Max, you mean the former SRC president? Yes, yes, Max. He's the leader of the cult. He was inducted into the group early this year. He knew he had to perform the sacrifice. He had been looking for a girl all this time. 
So when Rodney sent him the naked photos, he later found out her birthday was just around the corner. Mami became the victim. So Max and his gang raped Mami for the sacrifice. Yes, and he used the excuse that Derek made him do it. It was the perfect opportunity. But what about the other boys that raped Mami? Are they also part of this cult? No, I don't think so. I doubt. I don't think Mr. Santa is aware. So wait, what you're saying is Mami became number 70, right? Yes, she did. She was the 70th girl to be raped. She got pregnant, right? Da, yes, yeah, she did. But the doctors had to terminate the pregnancy after the shooting. And that's where the problem is. What I'm about to tell you will blow your mind. Mami was not attacked because of the documents or any information she overheard, though. What? What are you saying, Mansa? Hmm. It was because Honorable Alex thought she knew about the cult, but she had no idea. Da, I see. Max made a terrible mistake of misinforming Alex. First off, on the night of Mami's rape, five people were present. Because she was traumatized, she thought the fifth person was some angel. She could barely see the person. How did she know this fifth person? That's what I'm coming to. Rocky, this is how the rituals work. <clears throat> Four guys must rape the girl. When they are done, a patron, usually an old cult leader who completed the school over 20 years ago, must be present during the rape. After the rape is done, usually when they leave, the old cult leader will also come and perform some rituals. They call it a foam. If, what does that word even mean? It means garden or bush. I see, I see. That, wait, that's why mommy said she woke up in the garden. Exactly, because they prepare a garden with bush and flowers and lay you in it. Now, this is where the problem started. And who was the person who lay mommy in the garden? To confirm this, I want the only person who saw the entire thing to say it herself. Can I put her on the line? Go on, go on. Hello, you're on the line now. Rocky can hear you. Hi, Rocky. Lisa, talk to me. Who was this fit person present during Mami's rape? Mansa, are you sure about him? Yeah, you can trust him. Go on, Lisa. It is best you let me know quickly. So, I also wasn't sure in the beginning. I had two videos. I sent the first video to Derek, my cousin, but the way he reacted made me realize he knew something about it. So I decided never to share the second video. It was that video that had the man in there. When, when the man was done with his rituals, he opened her legs and had sex with her for close to 10 minutes. I really didn't know who the man was until recently. Look, who was that? Lisa. Lisa, who was that Rocky, person? Rocky, she's scared. Let me help. It was Honorable Alex. She sent the video to Max at that time. Apparently, he created the impression to Alex as if Mami had the video and was going to press charges against him. But because Max and Lisa had shared the first video and called it fake, he protected her by not telling Alex that she was the one who filmed it. He, he lied to Alex saying that Mami had hidden a camera in the bush before the rape, which was a big lie. Neat, neat, not Alex. Yes, Rocky, now this is where it gets interesting. When Alex contacted Jennifer of the Chalice Angels for a girl to sleep with, coincidentally, Mami was selected. The day Mami met Honorable Alex at the hotel, he was shocked. But he realized mommy didn't make him out. So he went ahead to have sex with her again. Honorable Alex was a former cult leader of Borman. He is an old student of the university, plus a former resident of Rockland Hostel. Then he must have been shocked to find out that mommy was the same girl they used for the rituals. And the same girl he ended up sleeping with in the hotel. <laughs> Who now happens to be his daughter. When he found out that Max had been arrested, he was doing everything he could to get him released because Max was threatening to go public if he wasn't cleared from police custody. Rocky, I sent the video to Max just so he knows I knew about the rape. But Max never told me who the man was. He denied. That's why we chose to say the first video was fake. It makes sense. Another reason why Mike was whisked away on the evening when he spoke to Alex about Mami. And out of fear of being arrested, he sends the armed robbers to kill Mami. He's making Derek and Casey and everyone else think it's because of the documents. That's why he sends those killers after Mami. I see, I see. So this is the reason why Mami attacked Alex yesterday. 
because she had found out that the man who came to complete the rape ritual was actually her father. It was Honorable Alex. Rocky, we don't have much time. I need to alert Kristen about this. We must stop the rituals going on in the university. It must be brought to the notice of the government under a highly classified case. Max has been released from police custody. We need to alert the local police to monitor Max immediately. Mansa, I must congratulate you for a good job done. Very good. Lisa, you will not disclose this conversation to anyone. Is that understood? Yeah, I get you. I understand. I had been arrested and placed in police custody for attempted murder and possession of a firearm. I will tell you later how I got the gun. But really, my intention was never to shoot Alex. I was just so angry, for my father to do this to me was so not fair. Anyway, I was being processed for court when Max arrived at the police station. What you're about to hear was devastating. Mommy. I don't want to see you. Max. Mommy, mommy. Wait, 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 wait. Let me explain. Let Can't me explain. you leave me alone? Can't you leave me alone? You got what you wanted. You raped me. What again, Max? What again? Your cult and all your devil worshippers will be exposed, I mommy, swear. Mommy, could you take it easy? Look, mommy, holding an unlicensed gun and threatening the life of a government official, you're going to be jailed for the rest of your life. I have enough money, Max, and I don't care what it's going to cost me. I'm going to find the best lawyers to fight my case. I have enough evidence to lock you and Alex for life for those rituals you have been involved in. See, you don't get it, do you? You still don't get it. Listen closely. The organization or the court is bigger than you and I. They are everywhere. The school authorities, the police, the lawyers, politicians, the judges. I mean, everyone is part of the court, mommy. They control everything. What do you mean by that? See, if they want to jail you today, mommy, no lawyer in this world can save you. You guys will surely pay for this. I swear, I'll go to hell and ask for the devil's help, even if I have to. This cult you guys belong to will surely be exposed. You may have won, but you have failed in getting me pregnant. Your evil seed you laid in me was aborted. I'm carrying another person's child now. <laughs> There's no need, mommy. They are done. The cult is actually done with you. What are you saying? See, the organization paid Dr. Addison to lie to you about getting pregnant quickly. What? <laughs> yes, mommy. Because they had to terminate your first pregnancy after the shooting. It means the final part of the ritual is incomplete. Oh, Max. The 70th sacrifice has been completed. Mommy, they succeeded. How? Hmm. Because you are carrying the child of a member of the cult. Joey? to say a big thank you our cherished listeners of League Season 3. We would like to extend our appreciation to our cast Margaret Barden as Mame, Edith Akahote as Sewa, Nana Kwame Bifa as Rodney, Ms. Drew as Casey, Kweku Boache as Max, Terry Mingo as Mike, Tia Alidu as Derek, Meslin Kim Okai as Michelle, Gloria Anakwa as Jennifer, Doreen Avu as Catherine, Lovia Adu as Salah Kwame Asamoah as Dr. Addison, Adam Smith as Honorable Alex, Owusu Norte as Mr. Asante, Freddie Luember as Jamie, Eva Maria as Lisa, Kwame Bwedi as Rocky, Alice Johnson as Mansa, Miss B as Joy, Donna Rock as Kristen, Caroline Sampson, as Miss Brown, Dennis Parker, as Moodoo. Lead is written and directed by Jay Foley and produced in the studios of Trap. 
the radio advertising people is Ghana's leading radio advertising company in the production of radio jingles and commercials. Visit our website www.trapghana.com or email us info at trapghana.com. The use of leaked series is not permitted until permitted by Trap. I pushed the ring on her finger. She was in total disbelief, shocked to the core. And I asked her another question. Let's make a baby. You, you want me to have your child? I'm ready if you are. Call him Justin if it's a boy and uh, Chloe if it's a girl. Chloe? Anything for you. Anything. Chloe. You came in me. Just think about us. If, it, if not me, then our child. Please, Chloe. Mommy, look, I know you're hurting all. You will understand me. Maybe later, but I'm sorry we have to break up. So, so you mean that? That is it? God knows my heart, mommy. I love you very much, but this decision I have to make. But Joey... Mommy, I know this won't make sense now, but I can't continue with you. What has come for you? Why have you changed? Did I do something wrong? It's too dangerous for me now. What do you mean by dangerous, Joey? Mommy, I can't. I just can't. I know it hurts, but I have to go.